Um, next up, we have uh, Carrie Headley, who is, as of this Saturday, will be graduating from the program. Yay! So, if you were to have this next week, she'd be an alum of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the fortune of having a class with Carrie last year, a novel class, and I learned so much from her. She is amazing not only as a writer, but also um, is really good at giving feedback. And I know that's something that we did a lot in class. So anytime I got feedback from Carrie, I read it and reread it and tried my best to, um, to make the changes. So um, without further ado, Carrie, our nonfiction writer, uh, who hopefully will have a book out soon, so keep your eye out for Carrie Headley. <laughs> just so we can go ahead and get, uh, get this started. Um, so, guys, this is what I write. This first one's called A Winter's Day. My love, to remember that winter's day when it was anything but winter. Our sweat, dripping between cracks, chiseled into red rocks, 
somewhere near Uskajata, Argentina. It is not to remember the desolate path that leads through onion valleys, nor the dog carcass with swarming flies, not the leftover sandal on the side of the road, nor the trash bags ripped open by hungry animals. No. It is to remember the time we traveled far from ourselves, when you pointed to the sky, burning like a rich fire with no particular flame, when afterwards you had me sit perfectly still in the spur of a moment and said, will you marry me for real, while the desert landscape, motionless, bounced orange into our eyes, reminding us of our distance to the sun. And then this one I wrote after visiting a small uh, llama farm in Peru, Chusak, Peru. It's called the Juana Concha. Crouched by rooms made of llama bones, women <coughs> weep to see green. Bodies sway to pan flute harmonies, bright arm twirls on rock spindles. My body hypnotizes to rhythm. Recipes pass mother to daughter. Crushed conchinia bugs for red dye. Add lemon to blood for shades of orange. Chisel from indigo rock, the marine blue buried in the deepest corner of childhood memories. Perhaps the memory of a mother wrapping her little girl in a purple quilt, for the first time keeping her safe from the bitterness and wetness of Sancho Suncha Moss, from the heaviness and hollows of the burgundies, then later feeding her with noble leaves the smell of chocolate, this warm feeling, precious, the way green feels precious when its rustled quiet shudders through Warango trees. Or perhaps my memory of Sara, a woman not my mother, but like a mother, who at the beginning and end of every visit wrapped her arms around me with the tightness and enormity of a setting sun, and like the setting sun I held on tight, but not tight enough, not long enough, to memorize every contour of her face or the sound of a laugh, not long enough for her to bake my wedding cake and tell me I look beautiful in my dress. It is the burden I've carried, the letting go too soon. But here in these green breezes, she holds me again in the brightness of these colors, protects me from what I do not know yet. And then her voice, Ijita, as a woman gives me a scarf of the finest alpaca sprinkled with bits of gold tells me to take it back with me, to remember how the crisp Andean air pressed against my face when the black night curled its hands over the mountain pass and finally released me. Megan Carp. 